I'm Selena Pompiani, back with another episode of From the Top, presented by Armina Stone. And look at these beautiful, lovely, colorful ladies with me today. I am so excited to introduce you to them. They are from the American Society of Interior Designers, Pennsylvania West Chapter. So this is Molly Lucas. Hello, Molly. She is the president of the Pennsylvania West Chapter. And we also have Mary Leipel, the president-elect. Ladies, thanks for coming on today. Thanks for having us. And you both look so stylish, so springy. (laughs) I love the bright colors. You guys look great. Thank you. So tell us about ASID. We're going to refer to it it as that the entire time because saying the full title, American Society of Interior Designers, is a handful. But tell tell me more about (laughs) it. What is it? Yeah, so ASID is a national organization. So there are chapters in major cities. Sometimes there's multiple chapters in various different states. It just really depends on where you're at throughout the country. So Pennsylvania West is located obviously right here in Pittsburgh. And we truly focus on networking and creating these relationships in the Pittsburgh region. So, you know, from start to finish, when you think of an interior designer and the projects that they do, every person who is involved could be a member of ASID. And so it's really important to, you know, have an organization like this because you can build those relationships and know, oh, I need countertops. Who do I go to? Armina Stone. Oh, that was a good question and answer, Molly. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Well, tell me how you got involved with it because you two have careers in this industry. So how did you become involved with ASID and to become the president and president-elect? Well, for me, (laughs) I've been working um, as an interior designer for um, 12 years now and um, just always looking for to build those relationships and to collaborate. And ASID is just a fantastic way to do that. You can network, um, you can be part of as much of ASID as you'd like and join the board, or you can just come and network and socialize with all the other interior designers and the vendors that participate. So it's a great way to, um, as an interior designer, a lot of times you're with your customers a lot, and it's just a good way to network and just kind of relax and relate to people that do the same thing as you do. Absolutely. So the chapter here that you are representing, how big is it in our area and how big is it nationally too? I mean, nationally, there are hundreds of thousands of, you know, just thousands of people who are involved. I mean, locally, we have a little over 200 members at the moment. Um, But that doesn't just stop with our members that goes into industry partners, you know, like businesses and local businesses. And, you know, it's not just interior designers. It's really, you know, appliances, flooring, you know, any aspect you can think of of an interior design project is really encompassed in the organization. And you, Molly, are pretty young. That's impressive. It really is to be the president of the Pennsylvania West Chapter. Thank you. And earlier, Mary was saying how you started from the bottom. You were a student. She was a student. So how did you work your way up to becoming the president? Right. Well, it was really important to me as a student to be involved locally. Um, I wanted to build that web of connections. I wanted. I knew Pittsburgh was somewhere where I wanted to put place place roots and stay. And so it was important for me to to meet people and continue collecting those business cards. And so I started attending ASID events. Eventually, as a student, I became uh, like on the student board at Chatham University, which is where I attended. And, And it really just grew from there. So from being a student on the student board, I was then student representative to the board where I had direct contact with the board and was kind of in on a few more things than just at the student level. And then from there, I was at large director and helped plan the Pittsburgh Home and Garden Show. So that's always fun every year. It's a big deal. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a lot of organizing and a lot of event planning, but it's it's so rewarding at the end of the day to make those new connections and, and to really reconnect with people you've known for years. And so that's really how, kind of how it grew. And then I eventually expressed interest in being president-elect and now president. 
That is so cool. And now you are the president-elect. That's correct. That's exciting. <laughs> it is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so you both, to get to where you are here, you both kind of touched upon the connections, the people that you met. I mean, I'm sure when you're making decisions in your careers, and if even if it's a personal decision, this is really a great organization to be part of, to lead you, you know, this is where you should go for this, and this is who you should talk to for this. So how big is it on connections? And that's a big part of really of any industry. Oh, it's huge. It's huge. You learn to um, just collaborate with people, and then you connect with people, like anything you do, right? Certain people you just uh, gravitate to, and if they don't know someone, if you're looking for a new job, they know someone who knows someone. When someone's looking to hire an interior designer, or like Molly was saying, looking to get countertops, or, you know, I work for Ferguson, which is a plumbing, lighting, and electric um, gallery, um, that's just a great way for us to say, oh, hey, call Mary Leipel or call Molly or, you know, whatever we do, we just work within each other that way. What's your favorite part of being involved in this industry? ASID, but also in the interior design world. Yeah, I think it's the creative process. I mean, it's to me, it's so important to see how other designers function and how they perform in their workplace and in their creative spaces because everyone has a different way of doing something. And so I always learn when I see other interior designers or, you know, industry representatives doing things a certain way, you know, it's always good to, to kind of put that in your back pocket, take a note and say, oh, I'm going to remember that for if I have to do that, or it's just a good, good thing to know. So for me, it's definitely watching that creative process unfold. And, you know, there's constantly new products, you know, being released and just staying on Staying on top of everything can be difficult, but when you have these connections, when something's new, someone emails you and says, hey, I have a new product. I'd love to come in and showcase it to you. Mm -hmm. I respect you both so much because you, you have to have a really good eye for this, and I don't. You know, whenever whenever the time comes when I'm about to build a house or move into a new house, I I won't even know, you know, how to style it, how to make it beautiful. I'll be calling you two. Please oh, do. <laughs> I, it's, it's a challenging process. I'm sure it is. I'm sure you deal with a lot of different clients and different people in your industry that you work with that you, you really have to know the person, get to know their personality before you go in and, you know, style their home. Right. And it's also an important thing that someone feels comfortable inviting you into their home because that's their space, you know, that's their, their personal lives. And so it really is an honor as an interior designer to get that phone call and say, Hey, I have a project. I'd like to see if you are interested. And you know, that to me speaks volumes of people wanting to open their door and have you walk through and make suggestions on what could change or what needs to change. Oh, absolutely. And, and being part of ASID for both of you, it's a community. It's a strong community. And Pittsburgh has a strong chapter, Pennsylvania West, that's in Pittsburgh. But it's, it's industry leaders like you both. It's students like you were, educators. I want to learn more about your mentorship programs. We have a fantastic one. And it really, again, it starts at a student level. And we take... Um, all the way up uh, retirees. So some of our designers that are retirees, um, if you're in the middle, if you're a mid-level designer, and we can match the students up and just have them collaborate with people. It's so nice because they teach us, older designers, things that we're not good at, like Instagram or Facebook, or you know some of those things that are difficult for someone who and TikTok. I, yes, I can't right? keep up. It's, it's I don't too have much. TikTok. I can't. Oh, you don't want it. It's a different world. But if you're a hand, if you used to render and hand draw and you have to use different mediums to do it, it's fantastic to collaborate with someone who's a young, um, inventive, just got out of school. They know how to use all those fantastic programs that you don't. So it's a great way to share. Um, experience and new and old with each other yeah. it's fantastic what a good point that is i'm sure you learn so much from other 
wonderful people in the program, but same with you too. Oh, you absolutely. Could, you could learn a lot, I'm sure, from Molly and, and, and we do. Molly from yeah. Mary. <laughs> no, and our current our current program is the William Slattery Mentorship Program, and he was a dear colleague and friend to many. I unfortunately never had the pleasure of knowing him, but he was a vibrant light in our ASID community here in Pittsburgh. And so we named this program after him. Um, and the scholarship award attached to that. And it really is a way, is now more than ever, I mean, so many students don't have opportunities for internships with COVID and different businesses kind of closing their doors and maybe just having the workers there and, you know, not inviting people in like they normally would. And so, you know, having us be able to offer students an internship during this time has been so huge and so gratifying for us to be able to provide that experience to students. It's just, I always said that too about being there in person, having internship. There's nothing like it. There is Getting nothing. the real world hands-on experience. You can't get that in a classroom. No, it's true. You're 100% correct. <laughs> So if, if somebody listening, hello, if they wanted to become a member or become involved in some way, how, how do they make that first step? Well, you can Google us. <laughs> Best way. And, right. You can find anything. Yeah, you can search us. Um, and then once you do that, um, it'll take you, drive you right to the, our website. And from there, um, you'll be able to reach out to um some of our members that help with communication and different things like that where we can connect, bring you to a meeting. We've been virtual, we're trying. We're actually stepping out next month doing oh. our first like real <gasps> event, um, but eventually we'll be back. Um, but yeah, that's how you do it. You just, you can look us up on the internet. Mm -hmm. And we have a fantastic website. We really do. Oh, that's perfect. So you just mentioned, it caught my attention, your first in-person event since probably the start of COVID last year. What will the event be like? We are doing, Molly, you want to yes. talk about it? <laughs> We're so um, excited. We are very excited for this event. I mean, we haven't had one as we're saying and so we're excited to get back in person and socialize and network and so it is called taco about pittsburgh <gasps> oh um, it's cinco de mayo we're recording this actually on cinco de mayo right. behind the scenes tidbit there so this is exciting <laughs> taco tell me yes, more so we are doing a downtown tour of pittsburgh and so we have lisa whitney who is a longtime colleague and friend of ours as well um was actually one of my professors she is going to lead the tour and you know we have registration on eventbrite for any one, it's open. It's not just ASID members. It's open to the Pittsburgh community. And so we're selling t-shirts. We're going to have walking tacos at the beginning, you know, just you to spice it me. up. Yeah, no. <laughs> Anything there, with tacos. Right? <laughs> it's going to be fun. We're so excited. the the tour is really just like an hour and a half of downtown Pittsburgh. You know, it's a great way for everyone to kind of see each other, but we're still going to be outdoors. So you don't have to necessarily worry as much as an indoor venue would be. And so we're really excited to, to get that going. Mm -hmm. That sounds, I was going to say, do I have to be a member to attend? Oh, no, you please don't. come. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds perfect. Just to get out to and socialize and see the Pittsburgh community. We miss that. It's not the same, but I'm happy to hear that you're doing that. You're kind of starting to get back to in-person events. Absolutely. That's good to hear. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Well, I, this is a question for both of you. So we could even start with you, Mary. You've been involved for a long time, and now you are about to enter another exciting chapter of ASID. How have you seen it grow over the years, and where do you see it growing towards? Well, we're really excited. Um, COVID has been difficult because being part of a chapter, a member of anything um, that its base is events, right? We're, we weren't be, we weren't able to do that, but it's really allowed us to focus on the things that kind of go back to basics. What's important? What um, is ASID really supposed to be about? How to elevate ourselves, make us relevant again. So uh, we're excited about being able to do some really different things, still keeping some of the stuff that's tried and true ASID. Um, events, but really um, connecting in a different way. Mm -hmm. And what about you, Molly? Yeah, I mean, I think it comes back down again to the students. I mean, really putting our efforts and our focus in the next generation of interior designers in the Pittsburgh area. And so, you know, we're, again, going back to the basics and reevaluating, you know, everything, because why not? You know, this is the time to do it. And we really want to make sure we are offering everything we possibly can and giving our all to the Pittsburgh community and interior designers in this region. And so, 
you know, in terms of what I foresee over the next even couple of years, next five years, I mean, I see the organization continuing to grow and to continue to provide events and resources for, you know, interior designers in the industry, commercial or residential. Did you do any traveling before COVID? Do you attend national events and and meet other people from different cities and states? Well, typically we do, Mm -hmm. um, but we didn't, we haven't, we haven't lately. Oh, you, you'll get <laughs> but we're there. We're excited. You'll get we're excited. Um, hopefully in the next year and a half, we'll start up again and do that. Mm-hmm. I can't imagine all the people you've met. You said how many members again nationally? I mean, thousands. I don't actually sure know a met. specific number, but I mean, in terms of, you know, we do have national training every year. So anyone who's on the board goes and actually meets, you know, people in Ohio, people in California, Arizona, you know, all over the United States. And, you know, that's a great way to also make sure we're doing our positions to the best of our ability and seeing what other organizations or what other chapters, excuse me, are doing around the areas. And so really trying to bounce ideas off of one another and just stay connected in that way throughout the United States. It's just, it's a huge web. And and truly in terms of travel, I mean, ASID has been absolutely fantastic. I mean, just again, speaking on a personal level of being able to grow and build my network and just opening my eyes to the design community, even just outside of Pittsburgh has been huge for my career. And that's what I always tell students is join, please, because I want you to go through what I have. Yeah, you could tell how much you have benefited from it. It's true. That's really cool. (laughs) Well, why I want to pick your brain about our beautiful town, our steel city. Why is Pittsburgh, um, I guess, what can you say? It, it's, it seems to be on the forefront of a lot of this stuff, which Pittsburgh is, it's a small town, but it's also a big town. And it's every year it's continuing to expand and, and we're becoming more like a big city, even though it's yep. still a tight knit community. What's so special about Pittsburgh and why do you think the Pittsburgh chapter in Pennsylvania West based around this area is so big? I think it's because of the the genuine connections. So the ability to even to feel like you're in a big city, you know, you got the downtown skyscrapers, you know, you have that feel, but to walk across town and run into somebody, you know, you know, it's that it's that, oh, hey, I remember meeting you at this event or, you know, it's it's really building those genuine connections and, and touching base with people. And I think that that's why the organization has been as successful in, in planning and events and, and really aiding designers and offering those resources is because, you know, we care and, and that's what we're trying to do. And I think that will just continue to grow. You know, Pittsburgh is going to get bigger and bigger, you know, and it's going to it's going to start to change. But you know what? We're going to ebb and flow just to, just like the city is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everybody wants to move here. I'm telling you. And those that go away, they come back. <laughs> they always do. Well, I also want to talk about there are so many different trends. I you know I try to keep up to date on everything. I follow so many different, like you mentioned, accounts on Instagram. But what's kind of like the hot trend right now? What do you see most people, you know, wanting to get in not only their home, but a commercial space? What are like the, the top designs right now of this year going forward? I mean, wallpaper is certainly making a comeback. I've been yeah. seeing wallpaper. I love that. Yeah. So, I mean, I personally would say I've seen a lot of wallpaper. I use a lot of wallpaper. I mean, it's a way to really make a mark on your space and personalize it. But, you know, at the end of the day, you can also peel it off and replace it five years down, you know, down the yeah. road. And so I would say wallpaper is a huge, huge one. Um, and then really just mix mixing metals and plumbing finishes and light fixtures. I mean, one room can be so dynamic and, you know, it really offers so much more depth and contrast if you're pairing a, you know, brass faucet with a stainless steel handle for a cabinet. You know, it really, don't mm-hmm. be afraid to mix and match. And before, I think a lot of people were, you know, were afraid of wallpaper because they had the, what, the, the 70s. Visions. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of folks were, were nervous about polished brass because, again, you know, wallpaper, 70s, 80s trends, you know. And, you know, those things are coming back. And I, I mean, I say everything in moderation. But, you know, those really are what I'm seeing at the forefront of the trends is mixing, mixing those finishes and also just fun wallpapers. Mm-hmm. I want to come into your homes Oh, absolutely. I want to see you. I'm <laughs> sure they are both so different and so beautiful, and every room is something special. And it's hard as an interior designer because you can like so many different 
ideas and concepts and trends. And then you come home and it's just interesting when you try to pull all those things together. I like our deco, but then I like that boho style. And oh, yeah. So just to be able to like incorporate all those things in your space, it's, it's fun, but it also makes you a little crazy because anything new that comes out, you're like, okay, green is the color. Oh, wait, no, now it's pink. Yeah, oh, it's, you it's have blue. to continue to, it, it, Absolutely. to keep up with. To evolve. It, like, yeah, your, your you, space evolves. You have to keep doing it. Well, what do you think about, you know, we're in our brand new location here, Amina Stone. Beautiful. And, oh, you like it? Oh, my gosh. Isn't this so, a cool podcast oh, room? It's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. Right. What a great <laughs> backdrop, right? right. It's just, but it's I, fantastic. You mentioned the green cabinets and the pink, and then because we have red ones up front in the showroom. So it's, I, I saw a beautiful ad of ours. It's a green kitchen. It's a fabulous kitchen. I know that is a hot style right now, or even you see blue with gold accents, but wow. I would, even if it goes out of style in a couple of years, I would want that. I love it. Well, and that's, I always say to my clients, that's very important to not just gravitate towards a trend. Mm -hmm. You have to gravitate towards what you like. So in 15 years, you don't look at that and say, oh, that was a color that I liked three years ago. That's if pink isn't your color, don't go Don't pink. do it. No. If you never wear green or you're just not attracted to green just because it's a, a popular, trendy color, don't do it. Do a color palette that you're comfortable with. And you can still make it updated and trendy and cool. Just stay within your own realm, and then you'll be happier. That's a really good piece of advice. Yes, I know absolutely. you have to do, you know, if you get something that isn't exactly you, that's why you play such an important role with your clients because you really got to get to know them, to get to know right. their style and what you see for them. Yeah, I mean, that's another part it's, about, again, being welcomed into someone's home is to seeing their style and trying to see, you know, some clients are saying, hey, I'm traditional, but now I'm really trending more modern, you know, and you're like, okay, you might want transitional, you know, you don't want to throw them into the deep end of the modern realm, but you also don't want to pull them too far back into traditional. So, you know, it's a, it's again, it's an ebbing and a flowing that I've mentioned before. And it, it's really ultimately getting that perfect space of relaxation, but yet fun and colorful potentially for the client, you know, and, and making sure they love it because bottom line is they're the ones who are sleeping in their bedrooms. They're the ones who are eating in their dining rooms, you know, and they, they are going to see that every single day. Well, I want to, before we sign off here, I do want to go back to your event coming up because it sounds amazing. How, when will tickets be on sale? So tickets are on sale currently, actually. Oh, so um, if you go to Eventbrite and you look up ASID Pennsylvania West, we have our own Eventbrite page and we have the Talk About Pittsburgh right there. And you can sign up and register and just show up ready to eat a walking taco. <laughs> that <laughs> sounds perfect bad, right? to me. How could it be bad? <laughs> and what's the website again, Mary? I'm sure we could put it up on the screen. Just if, if our listeners want to get involved, if they want to become a member of AS, AS, ASID. Just ASID.org. That's it. That's it. It's simple. Super simple. ASID.org. Well, yes. I don't know if I told you this earlier, but we have to sing a little bit. Are you ready to sing? With you, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's out. very easy. All we're going to do in unison here is sing the jingle. Ooh, Armina Stone. Could we, we could do that together. We can do it. Absolutely. Okay, let's get ready here. I'll count us down. Three, two, one. One. Ooh, Armina Stone. Wow. <laughs> I have a terrible voice. I think you two carried me. I don't that think sounded so. good. I don't know. <laughs> well, Molly, Mary, thank you so thank much you. for joining me today. The thank lovely ladies us. from ASID. Check them out. Oh.